Hello everyone. My name is Rahab Kimatu. I work with the Federation of Women Deaf Empowerment Network and a program assistant. Today it's a bit, very beautiful day. We have a visitor. Her name is Thank you so much. Please introduce yourself. Hello everyone. My name is Helen Ruguru. And my sign name is I am a teacher for the to the deaf children in Nyeri County, uh Tumutumu School for the Deaf. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. How did you become deaf? Yeah, it's truly, I was born deaf. Uh, sorry about that. I, I wasn't born deaf, but due to illness, I developed deafness when I was 15 years old. So I have learned uh, to live with my condition. Uh, so when I went to hospital, I got the information that I, I wasn't uh, profoundly deaf. So through the different information that I got from the hospital, I was able to access uh, education. And also my uncle told me, uh, how, how is she that, how is she deaf? But then my uncle told me we need to go for an audio checkup to research on the level of deafness that I have. So finally I, I embraced the condition and I accepted to live with it. So you became deaf? How did you learn sign language? Who taught you sign language? I had no idea about the language uh, because in my entire life I never thought about myself being deaf and I had never encountered any deaf person so I didn't have adequate information so now when I went to college uh, before I went to college I would always use a hearing aid but it, it caused a lot of uh, irritation and pain so I decided to to go ahead without using the hearing aid and I would hide, hide the fact that I was deaf but finally when I got the information that a college that a college that can accommodate me, so I went to Kise. Uh, there at Kise, I, I I met the first deaf person in my entire life. His name is Alfred. So he's he has a very clean heart. He was able to teach me about this, the deaf community, and that's how I learned sign language through him. Well, it, it is very nice. Time you became deaf. How how was the experience? How did you socialize with people during the time you were in Kise? So with my family, I wasn't able to associate with them very well because my mother would not understand what that language is all about. Sign language. Also, my sister could not understand what sign language is. They would think that oh, I was like a mad woman. So I became ashamed of it. Okay. How did you socialize with your family? How was your communication with them? With my family, uh, the communication barrier was always there, but I would always be patient with them. I would try to read their lips. And also I, I would like point on things. I would show them what I need. If I wanted a cup, if I wanted a plate, I would always point them but my sister finally accepted to learn sign language so we were able to communicate with her gradually then when her signs improved eventually very nice that's very nice before you became deaf you are you are in a hearing screw right how, how was the learning, the time that you changed and went to a deaf school? Oh, oh the life, my life was difficult because um, when I went to school with the hearing student, it was difficult because the teachers in class did not know that I was deaf. 
So also other students would abuse me, yes. And also when they would call me and I wouldn't hear them, they would abuse me and make mockery out of me. And then I, would, I was also not able to access information in class. So I was able to teach myself. And finally, I got a friend in, in class who was able to write down the notes for me. And at night, I would copy the notes again. And so I didn't even have a good rest in the evening. I would always read through the notes that were being taught during the day. But I was just patient about it. And eventually, I was successful. You celebrate. Your story is very encouraging. Are you married? What is, what is your status? I'm not in the market. I am married. I am <laughs> taken. <laughs> so I'm not going back to the market. Anyway, so I am married to a very handsome man. His name is Kibeti. And he's a deaf man. He, that's his sign name. Both of us, we're blessed with two boys. Yeah. One is in grade six, and the other one is in grade one. Thank you. That's very nice to hear your yes, children yes. hearing yes so how did they learn sign language yes so both my kids are hearing the first the first child it was not easy for us to communicate with her because um, the community attitude would have uh, against us but with time the boy eventually embraced the language sign language he would sign he would sign a bit we wouldn't force him to sign but it came from his heart to learn sign language and he would interpret for us any information that we needed he would always provide it for us yes celebrating you Why do you choose to get married to a deaf person than a hearing For person? Sure. My very first sweetheart was a hearing person, but he did not accept the fact that I was deaf. So I decided it would be best I, I get married to a deaf person it would be easier for me to communicate with him. And it's possible for us to sol solve any challenges that would come in our marriage. Yeah. It's very nice. So, tell us more about, uh, about your education background. Oh, OK. Thank you so much. Um, my education, I believe that education is the key to success. So my primary education, I, I took it up in Nyeri County. Then eventually I also was able to access uh, education in high school. Once, once I completed my KCSE, I achieved a C plane, a grade of C plane. Then I went to... Kamweja Teachers College. Uh, I was able to achieve a certificate in training as, as a trained teacher. I, was, I completed my, my education, my college education in 2005 and in 2006 I joined uh, a college called Kise. That's where I was able to learn uh, special education. I took up a diploma course in the, in the Molly focus on deaf children when I graduated in the year 2009. Then I decided to rest a bit, take a, a break, and I joined Kenya, Kenyatta University in the year 2011 up to 2015, where I graduated uh, with a degree in special education uh, with more focus on English and literature. So I teach English in high school. Thank you. It is very nice and it's so encouraging. When you joined the university, was there an no, interpreter? No, 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 no. There wasn't an interpreter. We didn't have a sign language interpreter. I really tried my best to to advocate for vision of sign language interpreter in the disability department, but that wasn't forthcoming. So I just learned to how endure and get by and study from, well, with myself. But it was a challenge because you see, when the lecturer, the lecture, when the lecture comes in, the student, the class is full of students. And if I try to copy notes from the student sitting next to me, it wasn't easy. But eventually, uh, I approached Monica and also uh, Nixon to help me advocate 
you know, for, for the provision of a sign language interpreter who was a volunteer, uh, but it was a bit late. Yeah, the interpreter is the recent sister who rested. Yeah, and also Clement. Clement also helps me to become what I am today. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. The time that you got an interpreter in the university, how do, how did you manage to learn? Um, at first, I it was a challenge. Uh, the interpreter, because the, that was a high level uh, class, so it, slowly the interpreter was able to keep up. So I cannot complain because she was volunteering to help me achieve more than what I could achieve. And I was able to achieve more before, in comparison to how I, had, I was without an interpreter. So I'm grateful to Nick Songakiri and everyone else. Thank you very much. I'm very touched with your story. When you joined college, was there their interpreter there? I trained myself to copy notes from the other students. So when the lecturer is detecting the notes, I would always look at the student sitting next to me. So at the end of the day, one day I remember the lecturer would see me, why are you always looking at the other person? Why don't you copy the notes right directly? So finally I decided to explain to the lecturer that I was deaf and he would see that I had the hearing aid. But likely, uh, I, I was in a special education class, so he would encourage me to move from a, pro, pro, a position where I was seated to a central position where I was able to lip read and get information and also see the notes clearly on the blackboard. And also, so I, I also I was I was selected as a student counsel. Your story is very encouraging. Now you are a teacher. Tell us more about your profession and your employment. How would you succeed to achieve all that? After I completed um, my college education in 2005, I never got the TSC number and TSC employment. So I decided to move to Tumutumu School for the Deaf, where I volunteered to work with them. So after a year, I was able to get opportunity and get employed by the TSC. Then after that, I've been teaching the deaf children because I have a heart for the deaf children because I believe that they can become a better, better people in the future. So when it's, when it's coming from the heart, I have tried to, to advocate for them. So in the year 2013, my, my principal, Yes, Madam, Madam Lillian Ocheng, uh, he, he saw my ability, she saw my ability by provi providing uh, lessons and also encouraged me that in the, in the year 2017, when TSC announced that there will be a competition for teachers, the principal encouraged me to join in the competition because we we started a special class for children who have more than one disability. So it's true, they, they are deaf, but they also have an additional disability. So we would teach the, 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 the teacher, because I was teaching the, the, yes, the, the, the students who are deaf and the students who had other disabilities, including, including deaf. I would, I, I would teach them different abilities like art, creating beadwork, and when I went to the competition, mm -hmm, I became uh, successful. I was competing with uh, he, uh, normal teachers, the normal teacher who are hearing teacher who did not have any other disability. So I was able to participate until I, I, was, uh, I was in the regional competition and I was given an award of the best teacher of the year. And let me show you the award that I have. So you with a disability do not allow your disability to define you. Let us let me show you the award that I had.
it's that the, your gift, is, your prize is very beautiful. Thank you. Most of the deaf children delay to join to delay to join school. Explain to her. Explain to us what are the effects of this child when she he or she joins school late. And what are the effects? Oh, thank you. So as a teacher, uh, I'm, my main focus is the area of language, and specifically English language, and also foundation in sign language. So learning com communica communication and also social interaction. So without early intervention to sign language or early exposure to sign language, the children are not able to develop, to develop language. So it becomes a very big challenge. So children cannot uh, make a step in development, in education, communication also at home is also a major challenge. Also, as a teacher, when you, you see children are limited in communication, so as a teacher it becomes a challenge to teach them. So we need also, this also encourage, it, it develops, the children develop low self-esteem, they are not able to express themselves, their emotions, maybe they would need something or assistance, they are not able to express themselves. And also at home, they feel isolated because they have not developed any language. So this is always, it's always a major challenge. Thank you. Thank you very much for that explanation. When a child is born who is deaf, some parents, it becomes difficult to communicate as a teacher. How does it affect a child during the growth of that child? Um. Okay, thank you. Let me, like I had said before, uh, language is always a major barrier in development of a child. Because being deaf, you feel, you always feel more isolated, you're always lonely, you're thinking like no one will accept you in the society. So without communication, it becomes um, hard for children to support their, their acquiring of language. Yes, and also language development or acquiring knowledge. Okay, thank you very much. Is the condition, how, why, how do these children feel isolated? So I would always advise the parents to learn how to interact with the children how to maybe go to the chief office and I acquire more information on how they can be supported with, since they have children with a deaf, deaf, I mean deaf impairment, and also how it's possible to teach the children uh, basic sign language so that they can feel accepted, they can feel appreciated, and they can start to develop language at an early age. And also the parents, they, can need, they need to learn how to live with their children who have that kind of disability to solve that barrier. Okay, very nice. First, some school, they, they don't teach about the early pregnancies. So what has the school done to these students? Ah, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. For me, I normally sit together with the children and I give them a clear picture of myself. And I tell them that I got married when I was employed, when I already had, had, had employment, had job, had, had employment. So you need to have your own money, you need to be patient, you need to be empowered so that you can... But if you really just want to get married, then you, anything can happen. But I need to tell, I always tell the children that, and the girls, that they need to wait until until they're ready and I need to and I, I sit them with them and I show them that there's a need to be patient but you know sometimes we have naughty girls so those who are naughty I always call them sit down and I tell them the deaf well, I ask them what's the benefit for kissing what's the benefit for having sex before before when you're older so they don't have an answer for that so I sit 
I sit down with them and I tell them that when choices, they always have consequences. So what, what's, what, what's the kind of future that you want for yourself? So when I sit down with them and I agree and to wait for the right time to have sex. And also I am happy because Rahab, you also came to my, to my school and you, you, you are, a, are a role model to the girls because the girls, when they see that what you have achieved, what different deaf women have achieved, then they are able to emulate them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's really nice. The next question. What words can you tell the government of Kenya about the deaf children? What can you tell the government about the deaf? Uh, maybe uh, before I tell the government the message, and so before I tell the, the message, the message, the same, before I say the message I have for the government. I would also would like to request the government if it's po possible to give a priority and also invest in education for children with disability, more so the deaf children, because always the deaf children, their disability are always forgotten because their disability is hidden. When you look at me, do you see any disability? No, but when you look at a blind person, you can actually see the disability, it is visible. So most of the time, they forget uh, the schools for children with disability. So if it's possible, uh, government to put aside money for the children with disability because they really need the support. And also at the same time, um, as government, I would like to request government to provide resources and more training for teachers who are able to teach deaf education because the government always uh, assign deaf uh, assign teachers who do not have ha knowledge on how to teach deaf children and they are not able to communicate to the children because they do not know sign language so the the this this is like wasting the time of the deaf child so they also the government need to employ teachers who are deaf and send them to deaf schools so because they have the sign language skills. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The last question, what message can you give to the deaf youth girls about their future and about their dreams, to achieve their dreams? So my message to the deaf out there and the deaf girls, before I give them my message first of all, I would like to ask them, what's the future? Before I advise you, you need to ask yourself, what's the future? What's your future? What's so special gift that you ha do you have? Each one of you, each or any other person with disability has a special ability. If you have, a, you have a special gift, then you need to use it. Do not sleep on it or say, oh no, I do not have a phone. I do not have, a, I do not have money. I don't have a car. Do not make excuses. You need to see how you can use the gift. And I would want to encourage you, you need to start from somewhere. You need to work hard. Look for opportunities, opportunities that you can develop your area of education. You, you need to have personal growth because if you do not have a personal growth, then you do not have any development. You have the key for success. At the same time, um, I would like to encourage uh, the deaf, the deaf, the deaf persons, avoid being idle. Believe in yourself. Have a high self-esteem. Say, yes, I'm deaf, but disability does not define me. I am never defined by my dis dis disability, and I am not defeated until I accept defeat. But you, all, you, you only think that the difference is is the fact that you cannot hear, but my mind is working, my mind is active, so you can achieve success. Thank you very much, Helen. So Dev, you need the deaf person, you need to you need to believe in yourself. 
to be able to achieve your dreams. Thank you very much.